Hello, everyone. Thanks for being a part of JiraCon. Uh, and thanks for joining this session. Uh, here, we are actually talking uh, um, you know, to Kara uh, from Charity Water. Um, myself, I'm Jitesh, co-founder and co-CEO of Trunlu. I also have Rahul, uh, who, is our, uh, who is our director of global operations and people experience. So together, we are actually uh, going to have some questions for Kara. Um, just so, so that we can actually give you guys an experience of what Charity Water is all about as an organization. So, Kara, my first question to you is, uh, what's the reasoning behind you joining Charity Water? Yeah, really good question. And thank you, everyone, for joining us. Um, yeah, so I personally am um, really active and interested in um, the nonprofit space and supporting organizations and causes that I really care about. And so probably about 10 years ago, I um, was looking up some um, volunteer opportunities and came across Charity Water and um, for the first time had never heard of the organization. And when I realized what the organization did, the fact that people around the world didn't have access to clean water, that people couldn't just walk up to their tap or have enough water to take a shower and use it to cook and and um, for their family to drink, um, I really wanted to get more involved and and help in any way that I could. So um, I kind of followed the organization for a long time, and this opportunity came up, and so I'm very very grateful to be a part of the team and get to work with awesome people like yourselves. Thanks, um, Kara. And yeah. can you tell us the uh, the history and mission about? Uh, Charity Water, uh, what is the organization all about, what it does, and how is it impacting uh, the world? Yeah, for sure. So I um, will start with a little bit of history and background on so to give you all context, currently 771 million people around the world live without access to clean water. So that's about one in 10 people worldwide, or if you're in the US, that's about twice the population of the United States. So when you think about it, that's a massive number of people who, again, can't just walk up to their tap and get access to water, are walking miles and miles every day to collect water. Um, and so this is what the mission of Charity Water is. We want to see the day and help get to the day where everybody has access to clean water. And this number here is zero. Um, the reason that water is so important um, and the reason why we chose to help people get access to clean water um, really comes to, down to um, a few key points. So the first is health. Um, I think this is usually the one that people think of first when they think of access to water. Um, women and young girls and families are drinking dirty water every day. This water that they have to go and collect um, is full of diseases and bacteria and things that are making their families sick. So they're spending time um, going to hospitals and also their money, hard-earned money to get medications to help them feel better. So when a community gets access to clean water, they no longer have to spend that time and money going to the clinic to feel better. They can invested in themselves and they feel better and aren't getting sick all the time. Um, the second part of that is uh, women's empowerment. And so women and young girls are predominantly the ones that are taking these journeys every single day to collect water. The journeys are long. They're oftentimes my, like multiple miles a lot and multiple hours. They're treacherous um, and they're oftentimes dangerous. There are both people and animals and, and things along their journey that make it really dangerous for them to make these treks every day to collect water that is again, dirty and, and filled with diseases. So when the community gets access to clean water, women and young girls don't have to make that journey every day. And they get that time back in them day in the day that they can not only um, invest in themselves, but invest in their families. We often see uh, women starting businesses. Um, so they really get to, to take their life back and, and take charge of their future. Um, so along with that is also education. So like I mentioned, young girls are making that journey with their mothers as well. Uh, so when a community gets access to clean water, young girls can spend time in school. They don't have to miss any class. They can be there and get the education that they deserve. 
They also, um, when a school gets access to clean water, no longer have to stay home for a week out of the month. So oftentimes young girls are staying home for that week and then they fall behind and drop out of school. So when that, can, that school gets access to clean water, they can fully get that education and not fall behind. And the last part of it is um, economic um, growth. So um, every dollar invested in clean water yields four to twelve dollars in economic return. So you can see that it's not only helping people themselves, but it's also helping the community to grow and prosper from an economic perspective as well. Um, so again, at Charity Water, we're on a mission to bring clean water to every person on the planet and reinvent charity for a new generation. We do things a little bit differently at Charity Water than a lot of nonprofits do. Um, so I'm going to share a little bit about that with you. Um, the first part that makes us unique and different is our 100% model. So 100% of all public donations go directly to funding clean water projects. So every dollar that comes through us from the public goes to the field, to our local partners to build those projects. Um, this is because we have a really generous group of individuals and families that donate to and cover all of our overhead operations. So everything to from my salary, the computer I'm on, down to the credit card fees on the website so that we really can make good on that promise to send 100% of all of your donations directly to funding clean water projects. The second part that kind of goes along with that, in my opinion, is transparency and proof. So we know that a lot of people have a mistrust of charities. It's oftentimes ambiguous where the money is going, what work you're supporting, how that's broken down. So for us, we really wanted to kind of break down that barrier and get people to trust us. And we do that by proving every single project that we build. So you can go on our website and see we have them all plotted on Google Maps with the exact GPS coordinates of the projects. Um, and we also, from a transparency perspective, keep our donors updated on the projects that they're sponsoring. So every time you sponsor a project, you'll get updates from us. Um, along the way so you can see the work that you're supporting exactly what's going on in the field and stay up to date on all of the projects that you're helping to fund. And the third part uh, that I think is really special as well is our brand. So um, at Charity Water, we really focus on optimism and hope. The water crisis is something that we know how to solve. And so we really want to inspire and excite people to come along and join our mission to help bring clean water to every person on the planet. We also really want to highlight the people in the communities that we work with in the best light possible. They're real, amazing, kind humans, and we want to celebrate them and celebrate that they're getting access to clean water and hopefully that their lives are changing. So we really try to focus on not the doom and gloom and guilt, but the optimism and hope part of giving and donating. So to explain a little bit more about our work specifically, uh, we work with local partners in the field. So every project that we build is through local partners in all of the communities where we work. They're oftentimes indigenous to the areas that they're working in, um, and they're the experts, really. So we trust them to go out into the field and to set up a community for success. They know the terrain, they know the weather, they know the people. Um, so they're really best suited to make sure that community has the right water project and is set up for success so that it can have access to clean water for years and years to come. Um, and we have a water programs team on our side that goes out and vets all of these local partners. So they go through a really rigorous process of looking into the partners, their financials, how they're spending the money, how can we help them grow? So we really not only work together with them, but also help to grow our local partners as well. Along with that, and our local partners picking solutions and projects for our um, communities where we work is the fact that we're solution agnostic. So what that means is that we're not a one size fits all organization. Um, we invest in anything from a well with a hand pump, which is sometimes uh, I think what people think of when they think of a water project is a well. But we also support really awesome things like rainwater harvesting systems where in communities where there's monsoons and rains, we're collecting that water and holding it and filtering it so that in the dry season, they don't lose access to clean water. We also in places like Madagascar have really cool pipe systems with tap stands that are where we're, there's a water source and we're pulling that water up from the ground through solar panels and solar power. And then we're filtering it out to each of the individual home levels. So we really try to focus and make sure that each community has the best solution possible for them. 
Um, and then we also are really invested in sustainability. So we not only want to help a community get access to clean water, but we want to make sure that they continue to have access to clean water for as long as possible. So we're doing that in a couple of ways. The first is that we're staying in touch with our local partners and we have monitoring and evaluation programs where we're going in, assessing the community and seeing how the project is doing and working to fix and repair anything that might need help over the lifetime of the project. The second part of that is we've also started a we've started a sensor system. So what that is is they're basically these really cool like little box machines, and they go onto the projects. We have them for both wells um, and tap stands, I believe, and they measure the flow of the water, how much water is being pumped, when it's being pumped, how much is being pumped, so we can see and track what the water flow looks like. And the goal of that is that it works like a check engine light would on your car, so that if something goes wrong or there's a change in the data, we can get out to that project and service the project ahead of it stopping in that community losing access to clean water. Because for us, there's nothing worse than a community not having access to clean water than having it and then losing it again. Um, so that's how we are really making sure to monitor and continue to invest in these communities and make sure that the projects are sustainable. So to date, with all of that, we have worked in 29 countries, built over 111,000 water projects, and brought clean water to 15 million people, which we are really, really proud of. Um, but we still have a long way to go. So uh, when we started about 16 years ago, there were 1 billion people that live without access to clean water. And thanks to the global community and also the work of Charity Water, that number is now done to 771 million. So you can see that while we still have a really long way to go, there is progress and we are making a lot of progress and we know we have the solutions, we just need the support to help get the rest of those people access to clean water. So that's where amazing companies like Trundle come in to help us to build these projects and support our work. So um, Jitesh, I think it would be really cool to hear about, um, you know, why Trundle decided to support Charity Water. Thanks, Kara. That, uh, you know, whatever you said so far was really solid and inspiring. Before I actually go to our reasoning, I also wanted to say this. I, I think I forgot. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to put them in the chat. We will be having a Q&A after, um, and we would be happy to answer those questions as much as we can. Okay, so uh, when we founded Trundle, which is in 2020, uh, 2014, uh, we had this mission of supporting the com communities that we want, that we are, uh, you know, the, uh, at, and we want to kind of serve them in different ways. Uh, but we were so small and um, uh, we still had that thought solidified, uh, but we were like not ready. So uh, last year when I was actually um, browsing something, um, the ad that Scott, uh, uh, you know, uh, did for spring kind of popped up. And then I stumbled upon that ad and it was so connected where you know uh, we were really impressed the way uh, you know uh, charity water was doing its things it's it's basically you guys should watch it we have it at the end of this session it's so touching and there are kids like who are 7 8 years old donating their birthdays towards charity water you see we all uh, at least i would say that all the folks who are actually attending this session here are privileged to have clean water and many more facilities that we get. If you look at the other side of the world, there are folks who don't have, you know, and water is basically a basic necessity uh, for one. And, you know, you are, you are kind of spending your whole day going to a distant location to get some water that too, it's not clean and leaving your education, leaving everything else and just going in and, and trying to do this, right? So, that was basically something that moved us as a company and moreover the ease of you know contributing with charity water you don't have to have a billion dollar revenue to do a project you know here we we could figure that out and we were really uh, you know uh, impressed with the way you know the projects were being done especially 
you know, the 100% donation going over to a, a, a project that is being designated for a company is awesome. And also as individuals, right, what, what one can contribute, which um, Kara is going to explain to you later uh, during this discussion, you guys should, you know, think about it. And each one of us can make a difference here. So these were the factors that kind of triggered us to um, uh, to make this decision of partnering up with you guys. And thank you so much for, you know, accommodating that request and making us one of your, uh, you know, uh, partners. So um, with that being said, I wanted uh, you to tell us what exactly is a well rehabilitation project, uh, you know, uh, and how, 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 you know, how do you basically do it? What is it? Why is it that you, you, you know, you are doing that at, as opposed to building a new well? If you could give us some sneak peek around that, that'll be great. Yeah, of course, of course. So I just want to say thank you to you because without partners and brands and people like you, we wouldn't be able to do the work that we're doing. So thank you very much. Um, Trundle has really generously sponsored a rehabilitated well with a hand pump in Malawi. So here's a little background and insight into Malawi, the country itself, and then also what the water crisis looks like there. So Malawi ranks 174 out of 189 countries in the 2020 Human Development Index. So apparently, approximately 35% of the rural population continues to lack access to drinking water. So that's a pretty high percentage of people that aren't able to, you know, go get a drink of water or are making these long journeys, collect that dirty water that Jitesh just mentioned. Um, so our local partner in Malawi that is building this project is called Water for People. Um, we've been working with them since 2009, um, and we have funded almost 4,000 projects with Water for People in Malawi specifically. So we're super excited to be able to add this project that Trundle sponsored to that list of projects. Um, and so a rehabilitated well is really important. I think a lot of people get excited about sponsoring new wells and new projects, which is incredible. But rehabilitated wells are really, really important too because of that fact that I mentioned earlier that there's nothing worse than a community getting access to clean water than losing it again. And so the project that um, Trundle had sponsored um, is a project that is likely costs too much to go in and fix but it also doesn't make sense to build a totally new project. So it costs around the same to rehab a well. So what we're going to do is go in, assess the situation, look at the project and see what needs to be fixed and then fully rehabilitate or fix that project so this community can get access to clean water again. So we're super excited about that. The community where this project is will um, is around 300 people. So Trondo will be helping around 300 people get access to clean water, which is awesome. Now that you've talked about Trundle's contribution, I'm sure they would be wondering how uh, the audience members can support Charity Water. So if you could please tell us more about those options, it would be great. Yeah, of course. So to give you a little insight into how you can become a brand partner, if you have a company, um, big or small, anywhere in between, um, we have a couple of different, different giving levels for our brands. So we have our corporate supporter um, level, and that's a minimum of $10,000 a year and up. The reason that we set it at that is because that's the cost on average to support a water project. We also have an official brand partnership level and a flagship partnership level. You can see the different um donation levels at each of these tiers here. Um, basically, the biggest difference is that the level of support from our team, our flagship partner, are really, really bespoke and specialized and individualized. And we also work really, really closely with our official partners. So this is, if you're a company, you can totally get involved, just like Trundle. We would absolutely love that. If you're an individual and you don't have the company, like myself, you can join the spring. The spring is our monthly giving program. So it's a really amazing community of people who donate and give clean water to people every single month. So it works the same way as like your subscription to any kind of streaming service or music service would. But instead of paying for that service, you're helping to bring clean water to people in need. Um, and for as little as $5 a month, you can join the spring and become a part of this awesome community. The really awesome, really cool thing about this as well is that with the spring, we update our members uh, once a month with really good news. That's actually what the, the email is called. It's called our good news email. We're sharing about what's going on in our community and all the work that you're helping to support. So we love the spring if you are interested in helping to support 
um, on a monthly basis. And then I think Rahul, you were going to help us talk about how people can, yeah. Yes. So in addition to what Jitesh has mentioned, as well as follow up to what Kara was saying, we have launched a fundraising campaign on Charity Water page. So you have the option to either give once or you can make monthly donations of your choice. And we at Trundle will match your donation up to 4,000 US dollars. 100% of this amount will be used to fund various water projects across the world. I, I will share the link with you over chat. And we will also add a dedicated page to our website to sell products co-branded by Charity Water and Trundle. 100% of these proceeds will go to Charity Water to fund more projects. Please watch out for newsletters and updates from Trundle regarding future projects. So with that, it's time for us to move on to the Q&A session. Let's see what questions you have for us. Uh, there is a question from Summer Kara. How can my company become a partner? Yeah, excellent question. So uh, if you wanted to reach out directly to us, um, someone on the Trundle team could potentially share my email or we also have a form on our website. So if you go to charitywater.org, um, how can I help or how can I get involved? Um, there is a section on there with brand partnerships. So if you click on that, you're just going to go ahead and fill out the form and all the information about your company and someone will get back to you really, really quickly and help you to become a brand partner. That's an awesome question. I'm excited about that summer. Awesome. Summer. Thank, Thank you. you so much. It's basically, this means a lot for us as, a, as <clears throat> an organizer for this uh, event. And if one person can turn up and become a supporter, that means a lot. So, for us uh, here at Trundle, this is just the start. We are going to be an evergreen partner with Charity Water. We would be funding a lot more projects. Uh, we will also support a lot of countries in Asia, including India, because I had questions that I got saying, you know, we have got a lot of problems in India. Why didn't we pick up a project there? We want, we, we uh, you know, we, we were late this year. So we we were looking at the projects available, depending on that, we, 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 we went ahead and picked up the available project, but we'll be doing multiple projects as we move forward in the upcoming years. Um, so thank you so much, Summer, for your initiative. Uh, we appreciate that. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, I'll just speak to that to touch quickly, just for a little more context into our work in the field. We work with our partners on a half year system. So from January to June, we're supporting one set of projects and July to December, we're supporting a second set. And so that the countries often change, um, definitely the types of projects change from first to second half. And so hopefully next year we'll get, um, you know, a project in India for you all to support, which is awesome. Yeah, and every, every country that is there, you know, where there is a water price, irrespective of where they are, we should support them because this is a basic necessity for us as humans. So irrespective of where it's going, guys, it really doesn't matter. It's, it's the support that all of us should care. And individually, all of us can contribute towards this cause because it makes a difference. You know, like I mentioned, right, when you actually look at that, listen to that ad, you will feel how privileged you are, uh, you know, in the other side of this world versus how much difficult it is for people on the opposite side struggling for you know this is a basic necessity they it's it's uh, it, they they need it and we can help so we should start campaigning as much as we can to make a difference yeah that's and amazing since Go there ahead. are no further questions i think we will ask you more questions i think <laughs> some more background information would help in terms of uh, the reporting how do you report the progress back if we fund the project how do we let us know that okay this is what is happening right now in the ground so that's yeah. the question that i have for you yeah really good question and i think this will be hopefully helpful um for summer too um the way so as i mentioned earlier our projects um are around 18 to 21 months um in terms of the timeline how long it takes from the beginning of the project which is where our partners are going in and getting construction permits and getting buy-in from the local communities that's something that's really important getting them excited and they have to you know really want the project sometimes we don't want it to feel like um like we're invading or taking over their communities so that's really beginning at the important part all the way to the part where the project is completed um and so at that completion phase we're going in monitoring 
how many people are in the community? Does everything work? Is everything set up? Did we educate that community on water sanitation and hygiene, which is also another really important part of our work as well. We're helping to educate people on washing their hands and the importance of washing their hands and um, bathing and things like that. So um, yeah, so throughout that life cycle, we'll keep you updated from the beginning. We'll, you'll get an update at the six month mark around the 12 month mark, and then a completion report at the 21 month mark, which will have the exact GPS coordinates of your project, along with photos of the project itself and community members. So if you're able to sponsor an entire water project, which is amazing, you'll get that reporting experience from us and you'll get um, updates just like that. And then if you join the spring, actually, you can join the spring through the link that Rahul just sent through. You can join it through the Trundle page. Um, you'll get those updates, those good news updates from us about all the work that you're supporting over the year. Uh, I'm pretty sure some of them are also thinking, do we have an option to choose the country? They have seen that we have chosen Malawi as one of the countries. So do they have an option to go ahead and choose a country of their choice? That I think some of them would be thinking that yeah hey, are you are you referring to spring or are you referring to a project because the project uh, a water project in terms of where we want to implement as a company yeah so if it's a whole project right Kara? if it's a whole project yep. you get to choose yep. based on the open projects available but if it's spring it goes to different projects uh uh based on based on my knowledge but you can elaborate on that Kara. Yeah, no, that's exactly right. So if you're able to spot support an entire water project, we'll we'll share some options with you on what we have available at the time. Um, and then yes, if you join the spring, you'll be supporting all the projects that we're working on across our portfolio. So um, we call that our general water fund. So you're just helping to bring clean water to people across all of our projects and opportunities that we have going on. And what other projects, I think we partially touched upon this earlier when you're talking about rainwater harvesting and other projects that are available. So if you could explain a little more about what are the different kind of projects that are available for people to invest in or to contribute towards. Yeah, so um, in addition to the rehabilitated well like Trundle is supporting, where you're helping to fix essentially a project that has broken down, which is really important work, you could also help to build a new well. Wells, new wells is um, we build in communities where there is a water source under the ground. You just have to dig miles and miles and miles to get to it, which require these really giant machines. Um, and so we go in and do that in the communities where that's available. We dig into the ground and pull the water up and it comes out through that, that well and then you pump it from the hand pump. Um, the rainwater harvesting system is an awesome solution for communities where there are monsoons and a lot of rains. Um, there is also we have um, spring protection. So in areas where there is clean spring water, we're putting a protection at the um, entry point or gathering point where people will collect water so that it's safe from animals and creatures so that communities, it's safe for communities and people to go up and collect that water that is fresh and natural and clean. Um, we also have those pipe systems with tap stands that I mentioned that are really intricate pipe systems that um, we're pulling the water up from the source and then feeding it in through those pipes to either individual household level or amongst a couple of households. We also have biosand filters, which we typically sponsor in Cambodia. Um, that is a really, really awesome and intricate um, individual household level stand where you're collecting water because there's water nearby, but it's dirty. So you put it in the filter and it essentially goes through a bunch of layers and the water comes out clean and removes 99% of all the bacteria and germs in there. Um, I'm trying to think what else. I think those are mostly the ones that we, most of the biggest solutions that we support. Um, it just depends from community to community. Um, how we're getting the water to the source. We also, um, I think I mentioned earlier, fund water projects at schools because that's really important. So oftentimes when we're supporting water points at schools, we're also um, funding and building latrines for the kids at the school and um, doing a big wash programming where we're helping to educate about um, washing your hands as well. So yeah, those are most of our bigger projects. Thank you so much, Kara, for, um, you know, being a part of uh, this uh, event, JiraCon, it it means a lot to us here at Trundle, and uh, we'll try our best to get 
the awareness spread across uh, within Trundle and outside Trundle as much as we can. Um, uh, Rahul, do you have any other questions that uh, that are yeah. open? I think it's uh, there are no questions from the HNDs, but every time I went through Charity Water and I was trying to read more about it, I came across a lot of interesting stories of people. Say there was Evelyn from Uganda, and there were many other people who whose lives were really touched by this. I saw that people were suffering from diseases because they didn't have access to clean water. So if you could mm -hmm. probably share, uh, because we have the time in fact, and I think it would benefit all those people who are still contemplating, should I go ahead with this? Uh, if you could probably share a story of transformation that you were able to make happen through Charity Water, if you have one such story, that would be great. Yeah, of course. And that's a great question. And just so you all know, those are all real stories. Our creative team travels to the field, to all the countries and communities where we work and actually goes and in, um, interviews and meets the individuals that were sharing their stories. We all have permission for all of them to share those stories. But um, yeah, those are all those are all real stories. Um, I'll share one of my favorite stories about a, I can share two quickly. Um, one is about a woman um, that we met named Helen. Um, Helen it was a mom and she had a few kids. Um, her community didn't have access to clean water and she was doing that exact journey every day, hours in the heat and sun to walk miles to collect that dirty water. And so when her community finally got access to clean water, she had enough water to give her kids to drink so that they could take showers, so that they could wash their clothes, so that they could um, water their crops, um, and so that she could take care of herself. Because oftentimes, when you're collecting that water, you're collecting one jerry can or one container of water, which is about 40, 40 liters. And so that's all you have for the whole day for your entire family. Um, and so when you have access to clean water nearby, you have so much more water and you don't have to ration out what you're using that water for. So when Helen's community got access to clean water and she was able to have enough water, clean water to shower herself, she said that she felt beautiful for the first time. And that is something that really sticks with me is that not only is it affecting your health, but also your mental health, right? And things that, how you're feeling about yourself and how you're feeling about, you know, your appearance and just every day-to-day -day life. So that's one of my favorite stories. And then the other story that I love um, is that we met a young boy in Ethiopia and because women and young girls often are the ones tasked to collect water, he noticed that his sister was not able to go um, to school and it was one of her favorite things. And so he decided that he was going to collect water and make the journey with her so that she could she could go to school and get the education that she deserved. So um, things like that, stories like that, family members supporting each other, um, people getting access to clean water are really, really some of my, what, what keeps me loving my work and loving being at Charity Water and also loving to help share our story and mission with um, people like you and um, work with awesome brands like Trundle. I think it's, you, I can already see some uh, people sharing. Thanks for sharing. And uh, uh, my question next would be to Jitesh. I think uh, Kara has been answering so many questions. I would like to hear from <laughs> Jitesh as well. Uh, I know that uh, Trundle has plans as we move forward to collaborate more and get involved in more projects that Charity Water has. So I, I would like to ask you more about that. What are the plans that Trangil has going forward? Well, um, this is just the start. Uh, uh, Kara and I were talking about the future in terms of projects. And uh, uh, I know uh, back uh, in from our Hyderabad office, I got a lot of questions like, hey, Jitesh, uh, we should be also supporting some, some projects here in India. And definitely our second project is going to be India. Uh, we don't know where it is yet, uh, but uh, in the beginning of next year, we'll we'll get to know uh, what are the open available projects, and then we would be picking up one, and we will be doing it uh, on behalf of Charity Water uh, or supporting Charity Water and making that happen. And and again, like I mentioned, it's uh, it's not where you're doing, but it's what you're doing is really what matters. Because uh, for me, I mean, I think we are privileged to be in this uh, in this world with all the uh, benefits that we are getting 
And we have to also leave this place as a better place for our future generations. So it's not just about charity water, it's about climate change. There are many things that we can control, like, uh, you know, uh, reducing the pollution, you, you know, reducing the usage of plastic. So Trundle has a lot of, lot of plans in terms of, you know, uh, contributing towards global warming and cleaning the ocean and many things, you know, as we move forward. And it's all being possible because of the awesome employees or the team that we have who is actually contributing towards Trundle's success. So we'll keep doing what we have to do and make it an example so that there would be other organizations that can follow through this and uh, you know provide some of the support that, that they can possibly. Ma majorly, what I wanted to achieve out of this session was basically to uh, educate uh, the Trundle team members and our uh, you know attendees today to kind of you know show them that it's a very simple initiative that one can do you know it doesn't have to be a huge budgeted number for you to contribute if you're thinking about it contemplating about oh let me wait for another two more years you're just you know losing two years of time so whatever you have however you want to you can actually contribute into charity water that's the best thing i like and like i mentioned uh, you know a 7 year old kid you know uh, uh, setting up all the money that she had for her birthday and actually contributing that into charity water and then after I guess a month she meets with an accident and she is no longer there and then with that awareness and within their social media communities whatever it is they were raising around one million dollars and then contributing that back into uh, charity water was so touching because I have two kids three years and uh, seven years old and I can relate it right I mean so I tell them that, look, whatever toys you want, we can we can get you that. But certain amount of money that you spend, you should actually allocate it into these kind of, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, these kind of social uh, support causes. Because, you know, when you are able to instill that into kids when they're growing up, it, you know, they, they would have that awareness and we can leave this place as a better, uh, you know, better place because, Life is a project, right? You you have a certain time frame. So within that time frame, you want to make sure that you are providing a difference, and then leaving leaving this world as a better place than what we had got it, right? So I would say, from an organization perspective, from a people perspective, you should you should start thinking about it and making sure that you are contributing as much as you can from that angle. Um, uh, uh seeing summer's comment yes uh, the social issues matter we are in a major drought in the western us so talking about that something i wanted to ask you again kara is what are the kind of challenges that you face while trying to implement these projects worldwide i know money is just one side of it but there are other factors that slow down your progress or make you abandon some of these projects in some areas so it would be good if you could tell us about that because I'm very sure that there would be people who are willing to volunteer or offer their support beyond money and which would even be of use to charity water. So if you could please tell us more about that. Yeah, I think so for us, we um, don't work in obviously conflict zones is, is really a big challenge. So sometimes there is a conflict that arises in an area where we're working and that's really difficult because then we'll have to um you know do the best we can to continue working but sometimes we do have to abandon that project but we always work really closely with the local partner and go back in um as soon as we can hopefully if we can um but i would say right now currently uh the biggest challenge we have is supply chain issues and also inflation so you know same thing where you're the cost of gas is going up and your groceries are going up and things like that the cost of the supplies that we're using to build these water projects is also going up so uh, that is making it more challenging and is slowing down the process because the higher the project cost the less number of projects that we're able to do at a time and also the less number of people we're able to reach with clean water at a time so I'd say right now that's the biggest we also are coming off of having some COVID challenges so just as we all had different um mandates and and restrictions and things from you know even state to state and and city to city 
we also were facing that in the communities where we worked. So we were having sometimes issues where our local partners couldn't get in, where we couldn't get those supplies to them. Um, so um, we did a really, really, our partners did a really awesome job of pivoting and helping to be um, really great partners in awareness of the pandemic and um, helping people to stay safe that way. And then also from a hand washing and sanitation standpoint, um, but being able to get back into the communities and meet with those community members and build those projects has been really, really awesome after having some setbacks in terms of timing from, from a pandemic perspective too. Uh, Kara, I have a question as follow-up to what you said is, do you also entertain volunteers uh, from partners uh, that are actually supporting you? Uh, for example, if Trundle wants to send a, a team of uh, you know, um, engineers or, you know, our, our team members, few of them want to work there, but we will pay their salary cost, everything. And if they want to be a part of this actual construction project, do you support that? Yeah, that's a really good question. One we get um, often. So we had a really robust volunteer program, but with the pandemic, we paused that. So at the moment, we don't have too many opportunities ourselves for volunteering. But however, we are happy to facilitate connections with our local partners for you so that you can reach out to them to see if they have um, opportunities that they need um, help with volunteering for. So it's kind of, it's really sad that we we no longer have a, a, a volunteer program, but um, we're happy to make those connections to our local partners in case they might need help on their end. Sure, thank you. Um, Rahul, yeah. um, I, I think, think yeah. uh, that's Since about it. Had, yes. You know, uh, good number of questions. Yeah, I mean, uh, um, if there is anything else that you have, we have got another uh, slide in which we would uh, we would uh, we would kind of give you the contact information and other yes. uh, um, other aspects. Uh, and also, you guys know that uh, uh, there is the closing session from Patrick um, in 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 the uh, that's the upcoming session and. There is another day. We don't expect yeah. you guys to be um, awake to attend those sessions. But if you, uh, um, are, you know, are there, please get into the next sessions, which is tomorrow. Um, and we would be happy to actually send you all the recordings of all the sessions that we are having. And uh, thank you so much for being a part of uh, Trundle's JIRACON 2022 conference. Uh, we would have another one next year, hopefully. <laughs> Um, and take this forward. And Kara, thank you so much for being a part of um, you know this discussion. We really loved this this conversation, and we would like to have many more in the future. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Thank you everybody for joining, and um, thank you for your thoughtful questions. We're super excited and very grateful to be partnering with you all on this project. Thank you. Thank you all, and goodbye. Yeah.